Hi, my name's Colin. I'm from Stockport in the UK and today I'd like you to join me in painting this watercolour. Hello and thank you for joining me. <clears throat> I've some raw sienna. Cabin in yellow, very strong colour. <clears throat> Ultramarine. Cobalt blue, just a touch, plus a tiny touch of cadmium red. Just take the glare from it. The next mix again ultramarine. You need this one to be fairly strong because we're going to put some uh, really strong rainy clouds in. Again with some cobalt blue, but this time adding burnt umber. We're going to send this into a dark colour. Then we'll add some ultramarine, cobalt blue, burnt sienna. It's yellow ochre we want. It's your first washes made up. Now we've got the washes mixed. What we'll do is we'll just make some strong tones. So it's ultramarine. Touch of cobalt blue. Tiny touch of cadmium red. To that, some raw sienna, real dark marine, cobalt blue, tiny touch of cadmium red, and into some burnt umber. That's it. Some light red to put out. We can begin now. For this type of sky, we're just going to lay the picture down flat, a little bit more control on it. In goes the raw sienna, let it drift down over the hill. Brighten it in areas with some of the cadmium yellow. I don't want it to go too far. You can stop it with a kitchen towel. I'll just blot out where the sun should be. Get that wash mixture. Goes the cobalt blue, ultramarine, and cadmium red. We'll water to that. Come down here, taking care to watch the yellow so you don't mix them together if you can help it. Blue and yellow, as we all know, makes a green and we should allow that to dry. Now that the sky area is reasonably dry, we just keep the paper damp just by wetting it. Attention to the background hill and I'm just adding water to this clean water from the castle make sure it's nice and wet and into that with the ultramarine cobalt blue and burnt sienna just test the strength so just add some water to it down slowly Around the castle, in hand with a little puff, just drop some raw sienna, a 
Oh, you brush first. Just adds a bit of sunshine to the top of the hill. Don't worry about it running because we're going to take that off with a damp brush. Just take the excess water away. to mingle. Once your background hill is dry you can then re-wet this area. Do the same to the on on the other side. Trying to carefully go around your castle. Into that you can drop some grey which was the cobalt blue, ultramarine. Tiny touch of cadmium red. Drift down. Put some yellow ochre. Just strengthen this grey up in areas. to this other side, repeat the same procedure, try to stop it running into the walls of the castle, that's what we might do, and with that some yellow ochre, rather than it just being all grey, some more water, Is. Just go around the castle. Back with a damp brush. Whilst this is still drying, we'll just run in some Naples yellow along the shoreline. Just dampen it. Well. Just be sorry. <clears throat> Some yellow walker in places. Well, that's a dry. Once all this is reasonably dry and it's not wet at the back of the castle, we can start to paint that. But I'm leaving the back shadow side to be painted last. up with the ultramarine burnt umber. Into that, just put some yellow ochre in there. More of the sky colour. It's a bit strong. You can always adjust it. Just some into the yellow ochre, attach it to the ground. adding a stronger tone of uh, ultramarine and burnt umber and I've just done a shape softening the shadows down here and 
anywhere where you think a shadow will fall whilst it's still just a bit damp this will allow it to bleed just scrub a bit in a drop once your castle on the front is dry you turn to this back wall or the side wall thing and you can have some stronger tones here because this is in shadow this is ultramarine and burnt umber into that absorb some light red gently soften it off once again and you just keep adjusting it till you think you have it right that dry onto the back wall of the castle just add the highlights to it the ultramarine <coughs> and burnt umber it's a strong mix onto this side some areas so you make the paler colours stand out I'll have to dry and now a strong mix of ultramarine and burnt umber paint the windows in with a light grey mixture and you put some bricks Obviously, spend more time than me. The only thing that's added out of these videos really is the drying time. I'll put a few in. Give you the general idea. Cobalt blue, ultramarine, burnt sienna. I'll try and shape some rocks. This is a dry brush technique. to give the impression of rocks round stronger colours in some areas just to strengthen it up see how the paint breaks over the paper that can help to form your ground once you have that in, I've boxed up three different colours here. This is light red, there's a touch of burnt umber. This is burnt umber, burnt umber and light red with a touch of ultramarine. And we'll use that for the bushes. The light red first. Just test the strength of the paper. This is a stipple br brush, fade off into the distance. stronger colour in just tap it in this is just the light red going in we just a big tree light red and ultramarine take a damp brush edges again branches I think that to dry if you want then we'll move on to the water and the reflections I'm just going to wet the area where I want the reflections of the castle to be roughly the same length 
the better it can be. white red just soften up the edges white red burnt umber all the time white gold helps just strengthen it up when you feel it needs it soften up again just a hint of where the windows are It'll look better you can let that dry you've turned your paper over in clean water Bravery test and bring it all the way across. And while this is still wet, take some of your bluey sky mixture. Just gonna put that on the bottom, just gently leave it up, gently. Grey. In the hills as we go. Softening off, just lifting some paint out. A tiny hint of sunshine. Or grey. And pull it. To your reflections. Now this is a very soft brush. Just test that. Just going to strengthen it up at the bottom. Tap in the reflection of a tree the tree colours that we have and you don't have to be accurate with this you just drop them in it tends to fade here it's in there here Just stronger mix in here the tree colour just to vary it slightly just a little bit there Now let's move on to a nice, very dark mixture. French ultramarine, cobalt blue. A touch of crimson. And now you can let that dry. As this is going to be a two-stage sky, yeah, again looking for a very dark colour which I'm going to get from Ultramarine I'm going to add it to the colour we put in the water and the sky and this is sepia you see how black it's going it's a light that with some more French Ultramarine More sepia. And I'll 
think that should be enough. Once you've re-wet the sky area, <coughs> all around here and down over the hill, you can pull some of this colour. I think you've only just made enough. Let it drift down over the hill. Still allowing this to drift. Tilt the board until you get the desired effect. Tiny bit more water. Touch it. Allowing it to drift all the time. Once you have it on, you can leave it. And a damp brush. Begin to soften some of the edges. to put some into the water a bit of gentle softening just while still holding the, the board up clean water again damp brush Soften the edge, dark. Keep your board at an angle while it's still wet. Let it drift down and then let it dry. Just a couple more things to add now. We can add some ripples to the sky mixture. There's a little bit more crimson in it. And we're just going to put some ripples across the water. You get the general idea, so what I'll do is I'll turn the camera off and finish putting the ripples in. And then you can take your time at home. Okay, once you've got it looking like that and your ripples are in, you can sign it. And after that, there's only one more thing to do. All that dry. And now the painting is completely dry, take a craft knife, a sharp craft knife, and just scratch in some bright spots on the ripples, exposing the white paper behind it. And that will leave you looking like wind streaks. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please look me up on Facebook. And thank you very much for watching. This is a painting that anybody can do.